Hello, I'm Natania, and I would like to give you a brief preview of my article. A case of fasa previa diagnosed at term, elective cesarean section with good fetal maternal outcomes. Fasa previa is defined as the presence of fetal vessels within the chorioamniotic membranes, above or close to the cervical ostium. Spontaneous or iatogenic rupture of membranes before the onset of labor or during labor can cause steering of these vessels, resulting in rapid examinations of the fetus. Historically, fossa previa was associated with very poor neonatal outcome, with the perinatal mortality rate in cases of undiagnosed fossa previa being as high as 56%. With increasing access to obstetric sonography and improvement in sonography technology, most cases are diagnosed antenatally and managed with a planned late preterm cesarean delivery, resulting in good neonatal outcomes and neonatal survival rate of 97 until 100%. I present a case report of 36 year old woman G3P2A0 who was referred to secondary healthcare with a term pregnancy and oblique life. The doctor who referred this patient was suspicious of a subprevia condition due to the unengaged of the fetus while she was at term and no sign of placenta previa. So we conducted a further method using transvaginal ultrasound and incidentally discovered that the blood vessels in the uterine wall crossed the birth canal. When doing a Doppler examination, the pulsation corresponded to the fetal heart rate. An elective cesarean section was planned and a male baby was born healthy with excellent APGAR score. Placenta was delivered completely and observation was carried out. There were two placental lobules with marginal umbilical cord insertion. Between two placental lobules, there was a bridging vessel which connected them and caused a fasa previa. In this case, the diagnosis of fasa previa was confirmed after the gross examinations of the placenta. The post-operation period was uneventful, with no complications and stable preparatory condition. The patient and the baby was discharged at the third post-operation. This article further discussed about the risk factor of fasa previa, the classification, the detection method according to International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetric and Gynecologists, the timing and approach for cesarean section, and the role of neonatology team in ensuring optimal neonatal outcomes. To conclude, I also present some learning points that have been used for managing fasa previa to guide the reader during a clinical decision. Thank you.